In the last video, we looked at the core concepts of Dirac notation, particularly bras, kets, and brackets. In this video, we're going to be diving deeper into these concepts by describing some of the properties of bras, kets, and brackets. The first property is that for every ket, there is a bra. This is just like saying that in CN, every vector has a conjugate transpose, because remember I mentioned in the last video that you can think of a vector as a ket, and the conjugate transpose of that vector as the bra. The second property is this constant multiple property. If I have a scalar within a ket, I can take the scalar outside the ket. But if I have a scalar within the bra, I need to take out the conjugate of the scalar from the bra. For example, if my ket is given by 1, i, and 0, then a times my ket is just a, a, i, and 0, which is the same as multiplying the original ket by a. Similarly, if we use the bra for this ket vector, then the bra form of the vector psi is just its conjugate transpose, which is 1, negative i, and 0. So that means if we put the scalar a within the vector psi and take its bra form, we'll get the conjugate of a, the conjugate of a, i together, and 0. But the conjugate of a, i is just the conjugate of a times the conjugate of i, which is just negative i. So this is what we would have. I can take the conjugate of a outside the vector to get the conjugate of a times 1, negative i, and 0, which is just the conjugate of a times the bra form of psi, which verifies our constant multiple properties. Now we also talked about brackets in the last video. Recall that brackets just represent the scalar product or the inner product in Hilbert space, so many of the properties of the bracket are the same as those of the inner product that was defined for Hilbert spaces back in the second video of the series. I'll put a link up in the description. So the properties of conjugate symmetry of linearity in the second vector, antilinearity in the first vector, and the positive definiteness of the norm, which is just the scalar product of a vector with itself, all apply to brackets as well. There are a couple of other properties that can be proven from the definition of norms and inner products, and these are the triangle inequality, which just says the magnitude of the sum of two vectors is less than or equal to the sum of the magnitudes of the individual vectors. This is just like saying that the sum of the lengths of the sides of a triangle is greater than the length of the third side. Note that the equality in the triangle inequality will only apply if the vectors are linearly dependent, which in real space just means they're on the same line. There's also the Schwartz inequality, which says that the square of the inner product of two vectors psi and phi is less than or equal to the product of the norms of the individual vectors. Again, equality only applies if the vectors are linearly dependent. Lastly, we'll briefly touch on orthogonality and orthonormality. Two vectors are orthogonal if their inner product is zero. In real space, this just means that they're perpendicular to each other, or they form a 90 degree angle with each other. The two vectors are orthonormal if their inner product is zero and their magnitudes are both one. In other words, they're both normalized. So you can think of orthonormal vectors as the unit vectors i, j, and k in the Cartesian plane. That's an example of three orthonormal vectors. Anyway, that should cover the properties of bras, kets, and brackets. In the next video, we'll get to the real fun part, and that's operator algebra.